Howdy folks, Nathan coming at you from beautiful snowy Colorado and this is the 2020 Toyota Camry XSE with all-wheel drive and it's just in I want to take you around it show you a few things talk about some of the competition and give you a hint about what we're going to do with it in the near future what you're looking at here is something very similar to what exists in the normal Toyota RAV4 and that's because it's a 2.5 liter engine this one puts out 205 horsepower 185 pound-feet of torque and it's hooked up to an eight-speed automatic transmission what makes this vehicle unique is the fact that it has all-wheel drive and it gets a combined 28 mpg which isn't too bad all of that is competitive because there's other vehicles out there that compete directly with this car that's including a nissan ultima all-wheel drive and the regularly normally naturally aspirated subaru legacy of course with all-wheel drive but they're very different vehicles and there's another vehicle that competes with this car as well but we'll get to that in a minute the bottom line here is it's a decent powertrain that's fairly efficient but i really wish they had a v6 There's not a lot to tell you that this is an all-wheel drive vehicle. Actually, if you looked at it from the street, especially with this package with the fairly nice looking wheels, it's not really super lifted. It's only a minor difference in suspension height up front, despite the fact that it does have a, basically a form of transfer case that can send up to 50% of the torque to the rear wheels, which is impressive. The rest of the vehicle, other than having what is, I think, a very, very pretty blue, also has this two-tone component up here leading to this massive panoramic sunroof this is all optional material and we'll cover that in a moment because it ain't cheap these options are actually pretty pricey but here's the cool part when you're looking at the car the only way you can tell from the back that it's all-wheel drive is whoom, that badge without that badge you cannot tell but you want to know what my favorite part of this car is despite the fact that it only has the four-cylinder and there's no v6 available for the all-wheel drive quad exhaust baby i know it probably doesn't make much of a difference for performance but i think it looks great let's talk about the competition because it's an interesting picture to paint because they're different yet they compete in exactly the same ether we have the nissan altima all-wheel drive now that one gets 25 city 35 highway so if you're looking at uh its competition that's right there with the 2534 on the Toyota Camry all-wheel drive. The Subaru Legacy gets 2735, which is also pretty much right there. So they're very similar. They're all four-cylinder engines. However, they're different because <laughs> the Nissan Altima puts out 182 horsepower. So does the Subaru Legacy, actually. So they don't have as much torque. They don't have as much horsepower, but they also have different transmissions. Both those other two cars have a continuously variable transmission. The Toyota has an eight-speed. I prefer the eight-speed. I think it's a lot more responsive and the car with the extra power despite the fact that it is pretty heavy i mean this thing you gain an additional 135 pounds with the all-wheel drive system putting this car at around just under 3500 pounds weight which is uh, kind of sort of heavy but at the same time that extra performance the eight-speed automatic transmission makes it fairly spirited once again really wish i had a v6 option i was told packaging reasons was one of the main reasons why it didn't happen. In we go, gonna get in with my big fat self. You know one thing I really do like about Camrys? Your butt doesn't have to drop too far in order to get into it. One of the things that a lot of people like with crossovers is the fact that they can just scooch you their tush right onto the seat and they don't have to climb up or climb down in order to get into their vehicle. So this isn't a bad compromise. This vehicle comes with the JBL system, eight inch screen, seven inch TFT, and it's got nearly everything in it. Heated and cooled front seats, which I adore, very comfortable front seats. But I wanna talk about the stereo real quick because Toyota has constantly let me down when it comes to overall sound. It's just not enough volume. I need loud volume to get the voices out of my head. Toyota always seems to play it safe and they never get to that point. A lot of other competitors have much more 
beefy sounding sound system. So that's one minor issue, but most of you guys aren't going to be playing punk rock, heavy metal, and rock and roll in your car, right? This is a new age car for a lot of people, including Roman. So in terms of overall comfort, Toyota has stepped up their game. First thing I do when I normally get into a car, seats, which are by the way, really comfortable in this model. Bear in mind, this is XSC, kind of top of the line with everything, very comfortable seats but I like to reach out and touch everything that I'm going to be touching while I drive, just to real quick. And if I find something that feels rough or whatever, I'll complain about it. But in this case, there's very little to complain about. Most of these materials are quite nice and the steering wheel feels fantastic. I really do wish that they had, uh, I don't know, a little bit more color in the interior, just to change a few things up. It always makes it look a little bit, I don't know, higher end when they have contrasting colors, but as it is, it's not too bad. By the way, this does have a massive panorama sunroof, which is an option. One of the party tricks of both the Camry and its bigger brother, the Avalon, is backseat space. Now I'm over 6'1", well, around 6'1", and I have pretty good leg room. Unfortunately, I don't have very good headroom. Look at this, I can't sit straight up. My head is really rubbing. Now, a lot of people complain, well, when you put a sunroof in, it doesn't take any space. Yes, it does. If you look here, you can see that it drops down. Oh my God, almost two inches. So in order for me to have a proper amount of headroom, I have to lean back like this. But if I sit like this, I'm hitting. No bueno. Big trunk, well over 14 cubic feet, and I can't open, there we go. 60, 40 folding rear seats, and because it's not a hybrid, you do have a spare tire under here. Ta-da, donut. I like that. I don't like spare tire kits where it's like, well, oh, sorry, no spare tire, but we will give you something that'll inflate. I have that on my wife's car, I can't stand it. Lots of space in here very usable. So pretty good size trunk, good package all together, but let's talk about one more option out there that I need to mention because I really like this car and that is the Dodge Charger with the all-wheel drive system. You get a V6 and you get all-wheel drive and it's a great all-wheel drive system. Very good competition for this car. Not as inexpensive and definitely not as frugal but a pretty good car nonetheless. Now I have the sticker right here. This vehicle starts with the all-wheel drive system at $31,405. That's not too bad. This one, fully loaded, comes out to $39,635, and that is not great. It's a very, very expensive vehicle for its class because the Nissan Altima starts at $26,800 with all-wheel drive and the Subaru Legacy starts at 22,895, once again with all wheel drive. Fully loaded, those cars come in a little bit lower than this one. So that is an issue. Remember I mentioned the Dodge Charger? Well, the XST with all wheel drive starts at $33,595. Fully loaded, that car will be more expensive than this one. So it's not the most expensive in its class, but it's pretty close. Now, what are you paying for? Oh, well, the panoramic sunroof is over $1,500 and all the goodies on the interior, that's an upgrade as well. Is it worth it? Hmm, that is a really good question. I think it's a fantastic car. I've driven them before. I've driven them in the snow. And here's the best part. Coming up in the near future, Tommy will be taking this vehicle and taking it onto the slip test, our patented slip test. And um, I suspect it'll do fairly well. It's got a great all wheel drive system. So there you have it. It's an interesting car for its class. It's lacking in a few ways, but if you need an all wheel drive sedan, especially up here in the Rocky Mountains, you could do a lot worse. For the Fastlane Car, this is Nathan. See you next time.